Okay, so who who of you is familiar with search metrics? Okay, we have a discussion afterwards. All the others, good. Uh, so if you're familiar with search metrics, then you, then you know that search metrics does every year uh, so-called ranking factor studies. So it's an, it analyzes actually, you know, um, the the you know the patterns of good ranking websites, what they have in common. And last year, the uh, search metric just did uh, um, you know a study based on industry, particular industries. We're not taking general ranking factors, but for industries. And that's what I was. Uh, I'm actually want to talk to today about, but not about the ranking factor studies itself. Uh, uh, rather than, you know, okay, now I have the information, what do I need to look at websites? So very valuable looking into into websites. So hope this is going to be fun here. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter quite active, so Björn Bid or uh, um, search on LinkedIn. Um, that just as an introduction. So as I said, we publish these ranking factor studies for five per industry. So there's a particular ranking factor study for e-commerce, for health, finance, media, and travel. And what we actually did here is like took a particular keyword set uh, which is you know uh, related to that industry and just looked at websites which are high performing and what they have in common and that's what the report actually says okay if websites and e-commerce ranking high then they have this uh, xyz uh, you know uh, ranking factors or things on the website which make them so successful so as i said i don't want to jump into those you can download it uh, uh, on the link if you want uh, but just le ju just let's uh, jump into the e-commerce one. So if I just summarize what the study says, then it says that an e-commerce you know, website, uh, and by the way, you shouldn't see this as a ranking factor, ranking factor, so as a must to have, it's just a correlation, right? So it just correlates with websites are performing quite well, that they have those uh, things in common. So ranking factors or correlations for e-commerce websites, they have a you know, larger file size itself. They have a higher number of interactive elements on the website. They have by far more internal links on the website and they, you know, this US data, 99.9% .9 of them is a common domain. So in Sweden would be SE then, for example. So I just want to focus here on internal links and I want to give you a best class example from the UK, which which is Gumtree, they rank on position number one for, uh, for used car sales in, in the UK. So if we look uh, just at you know, those correlations, and then what I did here is like looked at the top 10 ranking uh, uh, domains uh, for the same keyword and just uh, check what they have in common. So OK, file size for Gumtree is you know, a bit higher than for the benchmark in the top 10. Then we have like 300 interactive elements on the website itself, on this CARS website. We have uh, uh, you know, nearly the same uh, on, in, on, on the top 10, but by far 274 more internal links on the website. And that's what I want to focus here on, on internal links on an e-commerce website on Gumtree. If you just go on the website of used car sales, it's, it's the parent category where you get all the ads uh, for used cars, right? So if you just land on the website and you uh, uh, try to open the, the, the menu where a search uh, box is in, um, it already recommends you the top searches, as you can see there. I'm going down. As you can see here, so it already recommends you the top searches, so cars, free, puppies, kittens, and so on and so forth. It, all of them are linked to particular keyword landing pages, so to say. Uh, same if you open the menu flyout, then what you can see here is that they're already recommending you, uh, you know, particular categories, subcategories in that uh, special sector. But they also, on every category, give you a link to view all and motors so, so that you have, you know, always a link to all the ads on Gumtree as well. If you go then further down the page, there's a button which says see all make models. So you click on it and then you have an alphabetically structured, really nice structured way to click through, you know, make models, BMW, you know, Audi, you know, whatever you have. So everything is there. If you even go further down the page, then you see uh, again top searches here. And by the way, you can like if you're a general e-commerce uh, company, you can even play around in a seasonal, you know, relation here, right? So, taken in winter, you can, you know, uh, focus on snowboards and you know sky masks, and in winter, just on bikinis, for example. 
Uh, so you have the top searches, and then what I really like, because you know UK is a big country, uh, that they structure all the ads uh, based on locality and even on local, like on a country locality, England, Wales, Scotland here, and then even for every city in this particular country as well. So for the crawler, it's, it's you know from every angle the crawler can get actually to those ads and crawl the ads. And then on the very bottom in the in the footer, what you find here is again a really nice structure. All the top searches pages, all the categories, all the top cities again, and so on and so forth. So it at the end, it's for a, for a crawler like Google, it's a it's a paradise, you know. Because as I said, from every angle you get on the website, from every angle you find ads, you can crawl and crawl and crawl and crawl. And this is what you need to do because if you, as Gumtree, has 7.5 million pages in the index, you need somehow to you know guide users as well as Google, right? So take just a website. If you have such a large website, just think about you're building a city, right? And this is a screenshot from the city map of Malmö. And if you think about this is your website, and then you get your all your category pages, which is then Malmö, Vesta, and Husier. I'm sorry if I misspelling this, uh, but these are your parent categories. And you know, then you have different streets which are actually leading to all those you know different quarters or category pages. So there are different ways you can get through. Same here to Husier, and same uh, to what was the last one? Sorry, and same from Malmö to Husier. So different ways to go there. And this is how you should consider it when you think about internal linking on such a big website as well. So every street street should lead to a you know important page. Okay, the second one is finance. And if I just summarize finance and finance, the correlation for those top performing websites, they have you know lower file size, they have by far higher content relevance, they have you know 70% uh, of them have unordered list, uh, they make use of the, uh, H2 headings as well, and they load one second on average faster than all the others. And if we just take one best in class example, which would be Money Saving Expert, they rank one for cheap personal loan in the UK. And again, here, if uh, you know, I, I check the top 10 ranking websites for the same keyword. And again, here, like Money Saving Expert ranks uh, uh, loads in three seconds, whereas like the benchmark in average ranks at seven. You know, then you have 100 kilobytes uh, file size and the content score is 91. Now, I have to explain to you what uh, I mean with content score because what I just said here is uh, that content relevance is one of those ranking factors and content relevance is something uh, where we which we are using to calculate the content score and content relevance actually just means okay the content on your website is it in the same language than the search query is uh, is the you know the body content actually focusing on the search intent of the search query and so on and so forth how is it built etc pp so the content score that's why i'm going into content scores actually you know you know, just, you know, in a nutshell, what content relevance means. So same here, 91% uh, 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 content score, whereas the average on the benchmark top 10 is 59, so way higher, right? Okay, but let's look at uh, loading time here as a ranking factor or top correlation. If you just check, there's a tool, uh, it's actually a browser, it's a browser plugin, uh, it's called SpeedyEye. Uh, HTTPS sessions. So what they do is like they're serving all their you know uh, content and all their requests over the HTTP protocol. Uh, HTTP protocol is a new protocol, whereas HTTP one uh, is still there, but this one is actually invented by Google and it's way faster. The the big advantage here is that it's so-called multiplexing. So meaning that all the requests, if a server goes to a website, uh, if if you know uh, a browser goes to a server, it gets all the requests request over one connection rather than HTTP one over multiple uh, connections. Makes the website way, way faster. So they're serving their content over HTTP protocol, quite good. What they also do is that they compress uh, all of the JavaScript and CSS, uh, uh, CSS files already. So what you can do is go into your HDXs file and you can uh, use gzip compression, for example, which actually at the end just says that it delivers those files compressed smaller to, to from the server to a client. Uh, so makes the website faster as well. It's a standard technique actually. And as you can see, they're saving 80% here 
uh, on time. What they also do is like they're caching, like they're enabling browser caching, so allowing the browser to cache fonts and images for seven days. They can even do more because, you know, fonts and images are not changing that often. Seven days is okay, but you can even do more. So uh, my take is actually, you know, I'm a big M fan as well, but you don't need to jump on M, uh, you know, to be fast. If you just take a uh, look at your website and you compress and you clean up and you cache, then it's helpful as well, as you can see on Money Saving Expert, right? Okay, let's jump to the third one, which is health. And if I summarize here again, just 24% of health websites are using HTTPS. They have an average one image uh, per URL. They have a, far, a very high content score of 93%. Uh, they're using a lot of H1s, uh, H2s as well. No wonder, because they have by average 43% more words than the average. And they're using ordered lists, which totally makes sense in the health sector as well. So let's look at the best class example here as well, which is Healthline. They rank for how to lose weight fast on position number one as well. We do the comparison again, like they're using H2s, nine, uh, whereas the top 10 benchmarks are just 1.2. You know, they have a fewer word count than the average, 2,300. Content score is way up, like 93%, whereas 71% is the top 10. And they have, uh, they're using, uh, unordered list five and the benchmark just one. So let's take a look at uh, the overall content relevance, the presence of unordered list, and uh, let's start with the content relevance. If I just take this piece where they're ranking for uh, position number one, how to lose uh, weight fast, then you can see that they have a, a very high content score. Again, what I explained with content relevance, so is it you know focusing on the user intent and so on and so forth. So it's really well written and structured as well. If you take this structure, the unordered list, what that helps them is like that they are having a lot of featured snippets coming up and a lot of featured snippets as well because they're using all these ordered li unordered lists. I just recently read a study and I don't know if it's true or, or uh, if it's if they uh, misspelled it, but they said that Healthline is coming up for 3 million featured snippets. Can somebody confirm? No. <laughs> uh, so, that's that's how they do it, and it totally makes sense in a health sector because if you just refer to voice search as well, uh, you know, featured snippet got read out by Google Home, and you know, people asking, especially when it comes to symptoms or the, you know, they want to know if they they are going to die, then they ask Google, and that's that's how it is helpful for, right? So really nice. And you can also see that like uh, this is a SERP feature in our software, the SERP feature overview. You can see that at nearly 10% of all the keywords they're ranking for, they're, they're having a featured snippet. So this is something, um, you know, I, I, I really want to, uh, you know, give you as a giveaway, uh, let's put it like this, because, you know, if you take the health sector and especially, uh, you know, whereas content and, uh, you know, uh, content change that often because, you know, there are new studies out, there could be new symptoms, there could be new findings, etc. PP, that you take uh, content production more as an agile process. Uh, you know, very, very often we, we know, uh, we see that people, you know, they're producing content, they put it on a website and then they forget about it. They never touch it again. Publish and forget. That's it. But this is actually wrong because what we see is that if you, you know, you, of course, you're doing the content audit, then you see, okay, these are the topics I'm missing actually. Then you do a strategy. How do I want to, you know, produce this content? Does it need audit lists? How do I write it, et cetera, PP? Then you create the content and you put it on a website. What you need to do then is actually monitor it and every now and then when you see you know you, you're publishing the content then it goes nicely up you know more keyword rankings more traffic more conversions whatever when it at a certain point it just stagnating it stops and then it's you know stable over a time period of I don't know but then you need to act because what you need to do then is uploading text again you know updating the text and monitor again as long as it's just growing so this is something um, which we see uh, with our clients for us especially which is really really helpful okay the fourth one is media and the media, if I just summarize, they have a higher content relevance as well. They have 16% more words than the average. They have more uh, 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 links to external websites and by far more so, uh, social signals, which makes sense as well because, you know, 
when an uh, article is published, it generates so much, so many, uh, so much awareness that is, uh, it's crazy sometimes. I was working for a, a media website. So let's uh, take a look at overall content relevance here. So best class example from the UK again is The Guardian, and they rank one for Trump. Um, but what they rank actually for, it's not an article itself, what they rank for is a topic page, a tech page, right? And this is how a tech page does. Uh, what it actually does is gathering all the articles about Trump on one page. And why they are doing it? Because uh, media has a dilemma. You know, a media, uh, a news article just ranks for, let's say, two days, maybe three days, but then it's done. So the lifespan of an article is so, so, so short that they have the dilemma how to rank for those keywords like on a sustainable way. And that's why they, or that's actually very helpful if you take just one of those, uh, um, you know, topic pages and gather all the external signals and all the you know awareness it, it got on, on, on one page. That's what they are doing here. So and then if you have one article, then those tech pages got get linked from you know whenever there's written about Donald Trump, there's a tech link to this particular tech website. Uh, they do it for other, you know, for countries as well. They do it for, you know, other words as well. So whatever you want to rank for uh, on a long a long run, such a keywords like Donald Trump or I don't know what else is uh, popular right now in uh, Swedish election. Now we don't uh, talk about this. Uh, Spain country related news or so so forth. So there's a lot which goes on. So you can actually, you know, this actually explains how you can uh, do a tagging system like this. I just uh, want to skip this because I, what I was bringing to you is a prototype we did in the media company I was working for. And I'm, I'm, I apologize for the screenshot, but I needed to steal it somewhere in order to show you, and so I don't have it a high resolution. But this is actually a content tech cloud we built at the media house I was working for. And what you see here is all the articles we are publishing on, on the website, right? What it then does is, is analyzing all the content, and what it uh, pulls out is like all those words which could be, you know, it pulls out words and it compares it to all the text on Wikipedia. And on Wikipedia, you can be sure that they have a lot of, of, of words which you can use for, for such a tagging system. So we have related people here. So you find something like Ronaldo here. You find something like Queen Elizabeth here. We have relevant organizations. So you find something like Procter & Gamble, etc. All, all the big companies or like soccer, sport, European championship. So if you now click on one of the, these texts or one of those articles, it gives you all the related, related articles as well. And that's what the text system is actually doing. So as one landing page, get one of these keywords and then pulls out all the articles and gathering it together. Okay, last but not least is travel. Uh, again, here summarizing it, they had, in travel you see by far 57% uh, more words than an average. It lows three seconds lower than the average, 47% uh, higher content score, more bullets per list, more images, and less keywords in body. Uh, let's focus on keywords in body, let's focus on bullets per list, and let's focus on overall content relevance and word count. Let's take TripAdvisor as a best class example. They rank for best destinations in the world on position number one. And, you know, I'm just referring here to, to the Google moments as well. So they, they, they did this, uh, you know, nice study, uh, especially, uh, um, you know, focusing on travel. So what Google actually says is that in online travel as a user journey, you have different steps. Uh, the first step is a dreaming moment. Uh, so I want to get away. Uh, I want to get away moment. The step two is a uh, time time to make a plan moment. So oh, I'm going to Thailand. I'm actually going to Thailand in two weeks. So I'm going to Thailand. Or I want to go uh, somewhere where it's warm. Oh, maybe I go to Thailand. Then time to make some plan movements. Okay, where to go in Thailand? What can I see? I want to dive, etc. PP. Then let's book it moments. I'm I now know where I want to go. Uh, CoPP or Phuket or whatever you have. And uh, the fourth one is then the can't wait to explore moment. So hands up, who of you is working in sales? You're working in sales. Does it look familiar?
it looks like a sales funnel. Awareness, consideration, and closing. It's a sales funnel. And if you look at um, um, if you look at TripAdvisor, how they just delivering content on that sales funnel, then you see they have a nice top 25 destinations in the world to visit. Oh, the dreaming moment, I want to get away. The second step, best time of the year to visit Jamaica, because you already made it cons con uh, to consider to go to Jamaica. Now it gives you the best time to go there. Uh, the third step is then like uh, best beaches on Jamaica, so where to go in Jamaica. And the fourth one is then actually, okay, what to do in Jamaica if you're there. So they're not leaving you out. They're, they're just like taking care of you from the very first beginning of your thoughts about going to uh, Jamaica uh, until the end, until you're there, and then you don't know what to do. But they actually giving you some nice ideas. They also have a really nice internal search, which uh, you know covers all of this, what I just explained. And if you look uh, just on, you know, uh, of the, 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 the page where they're ranking first for best time to visit uh, to Jamaica, Jamaica hotels, the keyword coverage on body is just 64%. So they're not focusing on keywords here at all. They're just focusing on the, you know, user intent and the story content relevance as well, uh, um, mainly, sorry. So my key takeaways is that content relevance is one of the, and we are now in the current world, we are not in the future where Jono just started to pretend to be. Uh, but we are in the current world and content relevance is one of the, you know, the major things I'm, I'm seeing and I'm seeing with our clients is that if you are content relevant and you are, you know, focusing on user intent, then it's the half rent we say in Germany. I don't know if you have the explanation in English as well. So especially after the EIT update, I think that uh, content relevance is one of the major factors. Each industry is unique and needs user-centric digital strategy for technical content and business su success. And this is actually referring to what I just heard. You know, sometimes it doesn't make it's, it, you know it, it doesn't make sense to just you know speak to a client and say, yeah, we are increasing your keyword portfolio by search volume X uh, Y Z. So sometimes it just makes sense to ask them, okay, what are your goals? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve and then look at different channels it's not always seo it's not always organic it's not always facebook or so you need to find the right channel for the right intent and that's what 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 uh, we need to focus on and internal linking i was working for a big e-commerce site as well you know this is a low-hanging fruit if you have such a large site and you focus on internal linking and you're coming up with a really nice strategy it's half rent it really is and then think large. Do, do not focus just on one particular you know, part of a website, but rather look at the website as an overall strategy and not just doing you know, small changes on a category page and then small changes on a menu, but think about what impact it has to the website overall. So, tak, hadu fragra.